Palisades fires that killed more than two dozen people. And damaged or destroyed thousands of structures. Wildfires are contaminating drinking water across the country, and most people have no idea it's happening. Wildfires don't just destroy forests and homes, they also threaten the water we drink. And because water travels through rivers, reservoirs, and distribution systems before it reaches your tap, contamination can spread far beyond the flames themselves. With wildfires in the US becoming larger and more damaging due to climate change, the risk to drinking water is growing too. In this video, I'll break down the surprising ways that wildfires can impact water quality, and most importantly, what you can actually do to protect yourself. When a wildfire burns through forests, homes, and infrastructure, ash, debris, and toxic chemicals get carried into rivers, reservoirs, and groundwater, creating serious risks for both public water systems and private wells. If you rely on a municipal water supply, you might assume your water is safe, but after a wildfire, treatment plants struggle to handle the surge of contaminants. Ash and debris wash into lakes and rivers, overwhelming filtration systems. Some pollutants, like dioxins, can even spread through smoke and contaminate rainfall, introducing toxins into water sources miles away. Most treatment plants aren't designed to handle all wildfire-related chemicals, especially volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs. And when the level of contamination becomes too overwhelming, some contaminants slip through, making their way to our taps. In fact, studies found that VOCs have infiltrated municipal water systems, exposing thousands of residents to toxic chemicals. Tests revealed elevated levels of benzene in water mains, service lines, and even household plumbing. If you have a private well, the risks are different, but just as serious. Unlike city water, private wells aren't monitored or treated by a water utility, meaning that you alone are responsible for both detecting and addressing any contamination. Many contaminants don't affect the taste, look, or smell of water and pose serious health risks that you might not even be aware of. Heavy metals like lead and cadmium can accumulate in the body over time, and carcinogens like benzene and other VOCs are harmful at extremely low concentrations. Groundwater contaminated from wildfires can go undetected for weeks or even months, with the biggest risks coming from fire-damaged surroundings. Burned vegetation, melted storage tanks, compromised septic systems, and fire retardant used in the area can all release harmful contaminants into the soil. These pollutants can then seep into groundwater, tainting your well's supply. And wells that are shallow or poorly sealed face even greater risks. Ash, debris, and runoff can carry chemical pollutants into the well, making the water unsafe to drink. A study of California's 2018 campfire found that groundwater in wildfire-affected zones was contaminated with arsenic, cyanide, organic compounds from firefighting chemicals, and even microorganisms. Because of this, the National Groundwater Association advises well owners to inspect their systems for damage and test their water more frequently if a new contamination source, like a wildfire, becomes known. Now, if you're on a public water system, your water is monitored, tested, and treated, but that doesn't guarantee it's safe after a wildfire. Over 60% of municipal water comes from surface water sources, like rivers and reservoirs, which are especially vulnerable to contamination. Unlike groundwater, surface water is directly exposed to ash and chemical pollutants, which can wash in after a fire. There's also immediate risk of wildfire damage to treatment plants, storage tanks, and the water distribution system itself. When plastic pipes melt, they can release VOCs directly into the system, contaminating the water supply. Studies have shown that wildfires can cause widespread benzene contamination in municipal water, sometimes at levels far exceeding legal limits. Another overlooked risk is how fire firefighting efforts themselves can compromise water safety. When large volumes of water are drawn from the system to fight fires, it can cause a pressure drop, allowing contaminated groundwater, chemicals, and even air to be sucked into the pipes. That's why local authorities sometimes issue boil water advisories after a wildfire. But remember, boiling your water only kills pathogens to disinfect it. It won't remove heavy metals, sediment, and many chemical pollutants. In fact, it can actually make things worse by concentrating some of these contaminants as the water evaporates. So when your area has been affected by a wildfire, what should you do and in what order? The first step is simple, 
don't drink the water until you know it's safe. Switch to bottled water as a short-term solution, especially if you're on a private well, or if your local water authority has issued a boil water notice. The only way to know if and how your water has been affected is by testing it. Many wildfire-related contaminants don't affect the taste, smell, or appearance of your water, so testing is crucial to detect any hidden dangers. Here are the key tests you'll want to consider. Benzene and other VOCs. If your home or nearby infrastructure burned, plastic pipes and other materials could have released harmful VOCs into your water supply. Heavy metals. Wildfires can release lead, arsenic, and other toxic metals from soil, plumbing, and destroyed man-made objects, which may leach into groundwater or surface water supplies through runoff. Microbial contamination. If your well was damaged or exposed to depressurization, test for bacteria. Municipal water customers typically don't have to do this, as public water suppliers regularly test and issue boil water advisories if needed. pH and turbidity. Again, more important for well owners, if your water appears cloudy or discolored, testing for pH and turbidity can determine if ash, debris, or burned organic matter has contaminated your supply. Dioxins and furans testing. And finally, you might want to test for specific contaminants that can result from combustion, like dioxins and furan, which can enter water sources through runoff or rainfall in fire-affected areas. Because these are fire-induced contaminants, standard water tests won't be enough. I recommend using certified lab tests to ensure you get the most accurate results, and I'll link to a few of the best lab test kits down in the description. It's also a good idea to check with your local department of environment or public health, as they sometimes offer free or subsidized testing to private well owners in wildfire affected areas. So once you have your test results, compare them to drinking water standards. I personally prefer to reference the most conservative guidelines that prioritize human health. You'll want to take precautions if you detect any new contaminants, especially if you have a vulnerable person in your household. Using a water filter is the best way to protect yourself from contaminants that may have entered your water during or after a wildfire. The type of filter you'll need depends on if you're on a private well or a municipal supply and the contaminants detected by your lab test. If you're on a city water system, your biggest concerns are likely VOCs, heavy metals, and sediment from damaged pipes. Activated carbon filters are the best option for removing VOCs, including benzene and vinyl chloride, along with other chemical byproducts from combustion. Look for a high quality granulated activated carbon or solid carbon block filter, ideally with certification to NSF ANSI standard 53 for VOCs. I'll link to some of these filters in the description so you can check them out. A point of entry system is ideal to protect your entire home, reducing drinking, dermal, and inhalation exposure. Reverse osmosis systems use a combination of activated carbon filters and a semi-permeable membrane to remove VOCs, heavy metals, and inorganic compounds and are the best option for your drinking water. At a minimum, choose a system certified to NSF ANSI standard 58 for verified removal of contaminants. And generally, municipal water providers handle sediment and bacteria at the treatment plant, so you don't necessarily need extra treatment at home unless your test report indicates a specific issue, or you want a system, like a UV purifier, to provide additional protection in the event that your municipal water provider issues a boil water advisory. Now, if you're on a private well, your water is more vulnerable to contamination from wildfires and firefighting efforts. Your approach to treatment should be based on your test results, but here's what you might need. Activated carbon filters, which are just as essential for well owners as for city water, addressing VOCs and chemical pollutants. Wildfires can introduce ash, debris, silt, and other floating particles into your well. Use a sediment filter to protect your plumbing and appliances. The smaller the micron rating, the smaller sized suspended particles it can remove. As I already mentioned, reverse osmosis systems effectively remove a broad range of contaminants and are the best method for filtering your drinking water. However, pretreatment may be needed if your well water has high levels of sediment, hardness, tannins, or other common well water issues, not necessarily wildfire related, that could damage the RO membrane. If your well has microbiological contamination, a UV purifier is a great chemical-free method to address bacteria and viruses. 
along with filtering your water, get your well professionally inspected for cracks or structural damage that could lead to recontamination. Staying ahead of these risks helps ensure your water stays safe for the long term. So protecting your water after a wildfire is simpler than it might seem, and it all comes down to knowing what's in it and taking the right steps to make it safe. Just follow the process I covered in this video, test your water for contaminants, choose the right treatment system, and stay prepared, especially if you live in a wildfire prone area. But water safety isn't just about wildfires. A solid emergency water preparedness plan is crucial for any natural disaster. If you haven't put one together yet, stick around for the next video where I'll show you how to source, treat, and store water so you're always prepared. Click or tap to keep watching.